y'all. It's what day 18. So welcome back. First of all, I want to say I put a little makeup on for y'all today. Not too much. Try to do my eyebrows and put on a little foundation. Anybody that know me, I really don't like wearing makeup, but y'all are special, so I decided to try to look good for y'all today. Um, yeah, today is day 18. And I also want to say, let me close my computer, it's distracting me. These Ollie gummies, they like the bomb. Um, I got some for Malia. These the kid multivitamins with probiotics. My child is always constipated. I don't know why, but she is. But ever since she started taking those, um, she's been going regularly. And her appetite has increased. So I really like those vitamins. Um, and for me, I got the daily energy and the focus. Because I don't know what's going on, but I'm always like so drained and just extreme fatigue. But the daily energy it it keeps me awake without that i would want to just sleep all day i don't know why what's going on with my body but i just be so tired like can't do nothing be struggling just to wake up like horrible but those are good i got them from walmart they was like we just gonna say thirteen dollars a piece, um, but they're worth it. So today's topic is going to be on sin. Woo! I probably just lost all y'all right then, but somebody needs to talk about it, and I guess that's gonna be me. By the end of this video, I might lose one or two of my 16 followers. It's okay. But somebody got to talk about the tough stuff. Um, the Bible verse that I'm going to read today is um, from John 8. It says, Jesus replied, Very truly, I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin and that couldn't be in that couldn't be so true because it's like before you do whatever sin you do your body don't even yearn for it but once you do it then it's like your body needs it and it come you become a slave to it and not unless you want to fight it but even if you fight it you still might have moments of weaknesses where you might slip back in um i can say looking at the world it looks like everyone is becoming comfortable with sin. It seemed things were a little bit better when there were more discipline um, and people tried to fight the sin, but now it seems like everybody is just giving into it because I don't know if it's a trend or what, but everybody is just giving into whatever they sin is. Um, I've 
giving in. Of course, everybody's giving in to their sin, but I want to fight mine. Um, I want to break my generational curse. I think my, my family generational curse is lust. I think that's what it is. Um, my mom had men lusting after her, but never really cared for her. She had two kids out of wedlock, and none of the daddies really was there my sister same thing two kids none of the daddies there and me i'm one kid in <laughs> i'm one kid in um but i really i really want to break the family curse um i hope one day to get married but if i don't that child in there will be my only child. Um, it just... Sin is easy. I don't care what nobody say. Sin is easy. And that's why so many people are doing it. It's hard to want to do the right thing. Especially nowadays. You're... People criticize you for doing the right thing. They try to make you feel bad about doing the right thing. So the easy way out is just to follow suit and to do what everybody else is doing. But I'm just say God gave us all free will. So if you're okay, if you're genuinely okay with, you know, being a slave to your sin then be okay with it um but I don't feel like anybody should try to drag anybody into doing the sin just because they're okay with doing it um I know some people go get mad at me, but being gay, yes, you should love everyone, but loving the same sex is easy and a sign of weakness. Um, I get hit on by girls so much. So if I just wanted to be with somebody, I could have been with somebody. I could have been had like a girlfriend or something like that. But that's just that's just not me. Doesn't mean I don't sin, but um God say you should love everyone, but you shouldn't lay with the same sex because you are preventing life and that's where sin come in so if all women just start messing with men and men start messing with women we would go extinct extinct basically we are destroying ourselves with sin sin does nothing but kill us and did you do y'all ever notice that it costs either cost you your life or some money for sin? You want to be gay and you want a child? You gonna have to come out of pocket to get a child, and and that's that's the government is making money off of sin. They want you to not do it the right way so they can make money off of you these trainees God said you shouldn't dress up because that's what you're doing you're dressing up pretending to be something you're not deceiving people some might tell people up front 
I was born this way but it's a lot it is a lot of transgender people that feel like they don't have to disclose that to you unless y'all about to get physical but by the time that comes you never know the person already might have and fell in love with you so you trick it to me it seemed like you trying to trick somebody into loving you because if you was just a woman that like woman or a man that just like a man just be a man that like a man why do you have to dress up deceive people cuz I hear cuz especially for men men are visual creatures so before they even get to knowing who you are or whatever they already fell in love with you just because the way you look some of these trainees you can tell oh that's a man but a lot of them that and went and spent the money that sin got you spending money so you can look like a female they are confused and they think you're a woman until maybe some some trainees decide to keep their penis so until they see your penis they think you a woman why you think so many of these not saying that it's right you shouldn't kill nobody but why so many of these trainees are getting killed because they're tricking people into thinking they're a woman and then when the, the person find out they're a man they don't want people to think that oh I like dudes cuz in real life they don't they liked you cuz they thought you was a girl and when they found out you wasn't they wanted you to get rid of you so other people wouldn't find out sin is deadly it's deadly gluttony obesity you killing yourself with food and the wages of that is death or you gonna have to pay a lot of money to get that fat sucked off of you it seemed to be like a trend with sin either you go die from it or you gotta spend a lot of money to maintain it basically and to me it seemed like is it worth it I don't want to be weak anymore I don't want to be a slave to my sin God knows that our flesh can have moments of weakness. That's why you have to build a relationship with him so that he can help you grow and overcome your sin and live above it. Say hey, Malia. Um... She always coming in here distracting me, throwing my whole concentration off. <laughs> but yeah, he'll help you live above it if that's really what you want to do. God knows from the moment you, that you are born what sin that you're going to be born with. And when you're going to mess up and everything he know how to fix everything so it got to be up to you to want to fix it to want to be better he don't judge us on the sin he judges us he judge us um on if we're trying to be better to do better 
I see these these pastors teaching folks, but you're supposed to lead by example, but they're not leading. I seen a video earlier of a transgender pastor. I've seen gay pastors. You teaching people the Bible, but you know in the Bible, God said you shouldn't do that stuff. So are you skipping over those parts? That's the hard thing about following God. You can't just pick what parts in the Bible that you want to choose to follow. You got to follow the whole thing. You got to follow the whole thing. Yeah. And... God is one person I would never want to play with. Never. Like... If you want to live your life in that sin, please don't get up in front of nobody claiming to be a pastor and trying to lead folks when, <laughs> when you commit in sin on a daily basis. You're not even trying to overcome your sin, but you're telling people other people that they should. That you contradicting yourself. And you making people feel like the Bible is a contradiction, which is not. The first half of the Bible was before Jesus. I think that's what a lot of people get confused about the Bible. They say it's a contradiction, the Old Testament against the New. But the Old was before Jesus. So, God was a lot more stricter. He didn't understand why people kept sinning and doing the opposite of what he told them to do. It's like... I'm going to just say a privileged person. It's like a privileged person not understanding the life of a poor person or, so, or someone less fortunate than them until they experience it for themselves firsthand. And that's what Jesus was. Jesus came down here, basically God in the flesh, so that he can experience what we was experiencing to understand why we were sinning so much. Why we couldn't just listen to him. So he came down here to understand us. Who, who do you know would do that much to try to understand you? I don't know too many people that would do that. Not any, really. Well, go out their way. Put they self in uh, this, this flesh is weak. Put yourself in a weak temple. To try to understand your children. And then. Sacrifice yourself. So for those. Who really want to try to fight the sin. And no longer want to be a slave to the sin. Can try to do right. Repent. And try to you know. Live your life the way he say and go be with him. And for everybody else, you just go do you. And you and you already know you okay with your destination and where you going and all that stuff like that. If you okay with that, who am I to judge? I'm not 
I'm not judging nobody. I'm just the messenger. So it's up to you. It's your life. You live it how you want to. But be okay with the consequences and your destination. That's all I'm saying. But he died for us. And then here come the New Testament with new rules because he came down here and got a better understanding. I think the Bible is hard for some to comprehend because some are selfish. They want to see and hear what they want to see and hear. Some they don't understand the perspective because they've never been in that predicament. So if you've never been in that position, it's hard for you to understand. So and then there's some people that probably just don't care. Me even though I don't read the Bible, I understand I understand it. It's a God. It's got a situ even though whether whether you feel like the stories in the Bible is metaphorical or if they're true. It's a situation in there for every situation that anybody on this earth will go through. And it helps you to learn how to get out of that situation the correct way. So that you won't hurt yourself in the long run. But we as humans... We think we know more than God. I think that's crazy. How can you know more than somebody that created you? That's like kids telling their parents they know more than them. How can you know more than your parent when they've been here longer than you? You might be smarter than them book-wise, but how can you say you know more than your parents about being on this earth and what they experience. You just got here. So how can you tell God <laughs> you know more than him when you just got here? You been here 29 years? Well, I've been here 29 years. <laughs> Who knows how long you been here? He been here way longer than that. This earth is what? Like billions, billions years old. And who knows how long he been here before that. So, how can you know more? How is that possible? I think my 16 subscribers, I'm, my, I'm sorry, my 17 subscribers <laughs> probably just went down to 16, maybe 15. I'm sorry. Not really. I'm not really sorry. It had to be said. Somebody got to say it. People are so... sensitive nowadays you can't even tell them what's right from wrong without them being so sensitive about it it's like taking criticism you can't take no criticism nobody can take it nowadays or they having an uproar and somebody gotta apologize 
Why do I have to apologize for saying the truth? Because you don't want to hear it? Well, then don't hear it. Don't, just don't listen to me. But I'm not going to stop telling the truth. And I'm not going to apologize for telling the truth just because you can't take it. What they say? I want the truth, but you can't handle the truth. It's a lot of people out there can't handle the truth. I know I couldn't at first. I had a friend. Ooh. Blunt. Honest. Had me mad. But after I sat up and thought about it for a while, I was like, eh, it's right. <laughs> so I can't really be mad because he right. But I think for someone to have to to sit and think about it and to admit that somebody is right, you got to have a mature um, thought process. Because an immature person is never going to admit that somebody else is right. No matter how much they know deep inside they is right, they would never admit it. If you are a guy that is just sex sexually open, God has a woman out there for you that will be okay with that. That you don't have to mess with a man to do that. I've been seeing this with the the gay guys and the and the you know dykes getting together. That's basically what that is. A sexually open man getting with a girl that's okay with it. But where they still kind of messing up at is they portraying themselves as something that they not. Like, he trying to look like a girl and she trying to look like a boy. It's just like, why can't we be adults and discuss, oh, I like to do this, this, and this. Are you okay with that? It's either yes or no. And we keep moving. But it seems like for us to... <laughs> It seems like for us to process stuff in our brains, we got to do stuff in a weird way. Like, in order to process being a dominant woman and dominating your man without making him feel less than a man. Or, I don't know how to explain it, but... It's a way to do that without making him feel less than a man. Just like you, the woman, have needs. A man have needs also. So, you shouldn't criticize him or make him feel less than a man. Or go out and tell his business just because he have sexual needs. You never know why he have these needs sin baby sin affects people in a di in different ways um when somebody get raped for some reason well when men most of the time when men get raped they start messing with men. Not because they really want to, but it's because they feel like no woman will want them knowing that that happened to them. Or, oh man, my time went by already. Jeez, it went by quick. Or, um, 
they might feel like that threw me off they might feel like a woman might not want them like that you know after that happened or they might feel like or they might still have that urge even though that person hurt them they now have that sin in them and they're going to continue to have that urge and depending on how strong the man is is will he be able to fight it it's a lot of people out here messing with these kids that's why this world's so messed up it's a lot of people out here hurting these kids and damaging them and they're growing up and shit it's getting crazy out here it's getting crazy but it's hard to know who to trust. Who to trust your kids around. Most of these kids is getting hurt by family members. But in the black community, who -hoo, we don't talk about that. Oh, we not going to tell that the uncle been raping all the kids in, in, in the family. That the cousin been messing with all the kids in the family. And that's why such and such is gay. We're not going to talk about it. But it's the devil. The devil is in them. We turn a blind eye to what's causing the sin. We want to judge people once they're in the sin. Well, my time is up, y'all. I hope I brought some clarity to someone and I hope that you understand that God loves you no matter how much you have messed up but he's not gonna force you to change you gotta want to change on your own you gotta want to do better and be better he will always love you no matter what. But whether you change or not depends on your destination. But he will always love you. Just like a parent. They would always love you. But they can't force you. Once you're grown, they can't force you to do anything. It's your life. It's your life. If you choose to continue to steal... You just going to end up in jail. Nothing they can do about it. You chose to live your life that way. So, if you okay with it, be okay with it. But if you want to change, you got to start one step at a time. Start your relationship with God. He'll help you. It won't happen overnight. I can tell you that. It's not. I started my journey when I was 21. That's when I first ever in my life left Georgia and moved to Ohio. And I promised God if he helped me find a place because I'm just I'm just a person. I'm like a nomad. I love to travel. And I just I just jump at the opportunities without even really planning it. It's kind of, it can hurt you. It can be good and bad. So I just left Georgia, went to Ohio with my little bit of, um, my little bit of, refund money and was trying to go to art school up there I just I just need to get away and be by myself so I could focus without any negativity and stuff so I just left staying in hotels extended stays 
you know, them is staying this stays like two hundred, three hundred dollars a week. So money was going quick. My sister helped me out a little bit. That helped me like another week. But eventually I had ran out of money. So I was in my last week of the hotel. I asked God if you help me find a job and an apartment, I promise you, Lord, I will not sleep with anybody. I'll be celibate. You know, like the next day I got a job and like a week later, I probably got an apartment. I had food stamps. I had got my school refund that I used that to move into my apartment. But in between, like my last week of the hotel and moving into the apartment, I had met somebody at the job, which I know is dangerous. <laughs> But it is it's less dangerous than sleeping in the car. They allow me to stay in their home until my apartment was ready. Which I was not as scared as, you know, sleeping in the car because they live with their parents. So I'm just like, not unless the whole family just some killers, I should be straight. <laughs> so, you know... If you are sincere, God will work with you. He will help you. He helped me. And I kept my promise the whole time I was up there. I didn't have sex with not one person. But as soon as I got back, <sighs> I had sex with somebody. Ended up pregnant with my daughter. And everything went down here from there. I lost everything. My car. My my pit bull. I was homeless. Like, things got bad. Because I broke my promise. So. If you're going to make a promise, make sure... Make sure you're ready to commit to that promise. Because I tell you, you break that promise, things get bad. But as long as you keep it, I won't say every, every day will be perfect. But you will have all your needs met. You won't, you won't be struggling. But you'll have some bad days. Because that's just life. Where God gave us free will. So the enemy is free also to do what he want. To see, to test you. To see will you give in to the weakness. God don't want nothing bad to happen to you. But he allows the devil to move out here because he want to see who is really for him. Who is strong enough to be a part of his army. Are you strong enough? I know I went on my time, but I just had to, I had to finish out what I was saying. So I'll see y'all tomorrow for day 19 for our next topic. If you choose to come back. Whether or not I'm still going to make the video. Because this is my promise to God. This fast for 30 days. These videos for 30 days. And I feel like I will be blessed for it. So, it's your choice. You make your decisions. If you aren't sure what decision to make, ask him. He'll help you.
If you feel like you unsure what he's telling you. I know this might sound bad. But this is what I, I personally say. God, please give me a sign on what I should do. Help me make this decision. And make it so clear that the dumbest person on earth will be able to understand. I might Somebody might feel offended by me saying that. But me, I don't like any gray areas. So I like to be 100% sure this is what you're trying to tell me. This is what I should be doing. So that's what I say to God. And he be making it clear. Like basically throwing it in my face. I have to laugh sometimes because I'll be like, okay, okay, I get it. I heard you the first time. You know, I guess he'd be trying to make sure I understand. <laughs> but try it. Talk to him. You won't hear a voice. I mean, maybe you will. I don't hear no voice. But he will send you signs. But you got to want to see him. Alright. Peace, y'all. I'll see y'all tomorrow.